This is Shelly Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the 2016 Marka Microcap Conference in New York City. I have with me Mark Emelfarb, Dyadic International. It's a publicly traded company and the symbol is D-Y-A-I. Mark, welcome back to SNN Live. Hi Shelly, uh, thanks for having me here. It's always great to be with you at all these different conferences. You're like the I think the glue on the uh, paper. Thank you for that. It's good to have you. Let's get right into it and give us an overview on Dyadic. Uh, Dyadic International is a global biotech company. We have $62.4 million in cash as of March 31st, 2016. No debt and an incredible business opportunity where we're going to try to leverage a uh, biotech platform called the C1 Technology which we just sold to DuPont, our industrial rights, for $75 million. And we're now taking that technology and bringing this very productive, robust, versatile gene expression technology to turn DNA into vaccines and other biologic drugs, hopefully quicker, better, faster, and cheaper, that not only can we bring a lower cost to the healthcare systems and bring higher access and greater access to the patients, but also do it more effectively. When you mention the word platform, the immediate connection I make is to global need. Could you like, detail that a little bit, see if I'm right? Sure. There, there is a global need. There's a growing need for these protein therapeutic drugs. These are the most expensive drugs in the pharmaceutical industry. There's a critical need to drive the cost down and to be able to bring them more affordably so that not only the Western countries that can afford medicines, but the third world countries that can't afford these kind of drugs, they have the same kinds of diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, etc., but they can't afford the medicines today using the technologies we have. So it's not only about bringing profits to shareholders, it's about bringing new, better drugs and therapies to the world's patient population. So in terms of bringing drugs to market, can you give me an example of what is like first in line, second in line? Yeah, so our technology was developed over 20 years, the C1 technology. We took a fungus we found in Russia, modified it here in America, upregulated it in Holland and the Netherlands, and we take DNA, we insert it into this fungal cell, and it starts replicating the protein that the DNA encodes for. So in the case of the industrial business, we use it to make enzymes to feed and fuel the world, and now in the pharmaceutical industry, we're aiming to heal the world and I'll give you some examples. One of the things that we ourselves are trying to develop now is human insulin. Human insulin is a $28 billion drug, expected to be $42 billion in 2018 or 2019. And that's just an example of one of the therapeutic proteins we're working on. We're also working on a uh, generic version of Lucentis. That's a $4 billion therapeutic drug as well. So the ultimate goal here is to take this technology that we've spent 20 years developing for the industrial world that produces large volumes of low-cost proteins at large scale and bring it over to the inefficient pharmaceutical world where they produce high-cost, low-volume proteins at very small scale compared to what we're used to doing in the industrial side. To give you an example, one of our technologies has been used to produce enzymes for the biofuel industry at 500,000 liters. That's 25 times the scale or size of the largest Cho cell plant that's used to make pharmaceutical drugs like Embrel and EPO, et cetera. So the goal here is to be able to take this technology that we spent the last 20 years developing the molecular tools to genetically engineer it so that it makes the right qualitative form of large volumes, low cost proteins that can dramatically save billions of dollars for the healthcare system, bring the cost of drugs down for the patient populations all over the world, and obviously allow dyadic shareholders to generate significant value. Now, although you have so much cash in the bank, is your uh, future going to be a licensing model, or is it going to be development into production and as a pharmaceutical company? Uh, currently, our plans are not to be a pharmaceutical company. It's to be a licensing model to take on the same model we did in the industrial world where we license technology to companies like BASF, one of the largest companies in the world, 
Uh, of course, DuPont paid us $75 million to get access and to own the technology for the industrial biotech business. Companies like Codexis and Shell Oil licensed the technology, et cetera. So, Shelley, the, the goal here is to advance the technology, generate the data to do the same kind of a pattern that we did for the industrial biotech business and to burn as little money of our own as possible and to create significant value for our shareholders. Mark, I last saw you, I believe it was October. Uh, any updates since then? Uh, yeah, we've had a lot of significant things happen since then. Uh, we closed the transaction with DuPont where we received $75 million uh, for the sale of our industrial biotech business. Uh, last month we reported we received $2.1 million from the third out of the fourth law, four law firms that we're actually pursuing for their uh, malpractice and breach of fiduciary duties. And we have a trial date set up January 6, 2017, where we expect to hold Greenberg Torrig res uh, responsible for the damages and lost profits and lost opportunities that not only we suffered, but we believe that the overall population suffered by holding this technology back for the last decade, where we could have been treating people for less and more affordably. And on the business side, of course, we reported last October, I don't know if it was before or after uh, we saw you, Shelley, but we reported that the vaccine data that came in from Sanofi Pasteur, we created a vaccine using the C1 technology where the vaccine was equal or better in its immune response. So that was actually very encouraging, and we're continuing with that R&D program to try to develop C1 to produce vaccines that not only can produce them cheaper in larger volumes, but also potentially even better performance. On the science end, 2016 is half gone. We have a half year left, 2017. Give me a little bit of insight into where you think things will be by the end of 2017. Tell me what you can. Well, I hate to give projections because, of course, science is science and you never know the outcome. But we've had very good luck and a lot of serendipitous things that have happened along the way. So as I mentioned, we've started to do some internal funding now that we have the capital to pursue some opportunities to prove out the technology so that it can be demonstrated, that it can be used for vaccine production, for biologic production. In that regards, with Sanofi, we continue to advance that vaccine program. We've entered into a research and development collaboration called ZAPI, that's Z-A-P-I. That's an EU-funded 22 million euro project that has people like AstraZeneca and all different universities and academic institutes involved. Where we're taking antigens and creating new vaccines as well to potentially bring a, a cure for certain diseases that they're interested in doing. But more importantly, that, that ZAPI program, if we're successful in producing these vaccines in C1, will lead to regulatory approval at the expense of not dyadic, but the EU as they bring it through safety, toxicity, pathogenicity studies, performance studies to get it to the EU regulatory. Because what they're interested in is creating a fast track way to not only make vaccines, but to make them faster for pandemic or epidemics so that we actually can make them in large volumes and treat a much larger portion of people using C1 than using the existing technologies. And then in addition to that, as I've mentioned, we're pursuing trying to demonstrate that we can make non-glycoproteins like insulin and generic versions of Lucentis using C1. So we've embarked upon that research program internally. And then we're about to embark on the glycoengineering, which is the genetic structure changes inside the C1 cell using the molecular tools we've created over the last 20 years for industrial biotechnology to change the way that the proteins come out of the C1 cell, sort of mimics human glyco patterns. And then we can chase after things like Embrel and EPO, the 200 plus million dollars in biologic drugs out of the marketplace today. For more information, let's get your website out there. Our website is www.dyatic.com. And you want to spell it because I know it can be difficult. Yes, that's uh, www.dyadic.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Emelfarb, Dyatic International. It's a publicly traded company, D-Y-A-I. 
I'm Shelley Kraft. This is SNN Live, and we're coming to you live from the 2016 Markham Microcap Conference in New York City. Mark, it's a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Shelley, thank you for having me. It's always great to be with you. Thanks.